so there are basically four security groupings one thing you have to understand is these are not we can say uh, all all the countries are not involved here so we can say these are we can say informal arrangements informal arrangements they are not negotiated on a multilateral body like uh, united unbo or uh, etc good morning students welcome back to plutus is right today is our 34th day and uh, today the topic for discussion is military exercises and security grouping so basically military from military exercises i am keeping i am keep it in, uh, in the 95 days prelims challenge because there is you may get a uh, you may go to uh, get a question from this topic okay okay so i mean it is a very small topic but the cost to benefit analysis if you see it is more uh, within the less time you can uh, we can say you, you can expect one question from this topic similarly i have included the security groupings also uh, in this topic i am going to discuss them combinedly one after the other basically the security groupings so basically there are four security groupings like australia group wsnr group and uh, uh, mtcr so i mean basically this comes in the international relations so however because this topic is small i am going to discuss uh, uh, both of them however this topic is also very very important security groupings because india has invested we can say a lot of political capital to enter into i mean to three of the groups india has uh, secured we can say secured membership still it is out of one more group that is most important group uh, it is uh, related to nuclear energy so we will also see those aspects first we will discuss about the military exercises so basically military exercises can be uh, we can say classified into two to three categories we will see them so basically it is to military exercises some of the ob objectives are to you can say increase the relationships bilateral or multilateral uh, relations with the other countries and also to keep the forces armed forces or the we can say security forces battle ready battle ready so the major objectives are one is to keep the security forces battle ready so because of this reasons uh, the we can say the military exercises will be conducted similarly to improve the bilateral or multilateral relations is also it uh, it is uh, they are being conducted it also help in we can say knowledge exchange the knowledge exchange so for example if india is conducting exercises joint exercises with let's say usa or france so i mean uh, we as uh, we all are know they are more sophi uh, sophisticated those security forces are more sophi sophisticated than us so we can gain some knowledge uh, through these exercises also so these are the some of the brief advantages of the uh, we can say military exercises so basically the exercises can be studied under different uh, we can say categories one is bilateral relations so this uh, these will happen between two countries india and another country for example india russia india france india india usa india sri lanka etc similarly multilateral uh, multilateral exercises so here more than two countries will be involved right similarly service specific uh, exercises so these exercises will be conducted uh, its own uh, set of exercises uh take it navy take it uh, uh, armed forces or take it for that matter air force so service uh, service specific exercises will also be there similarly there will be uh, there will be counter terrorism uh, exercises so we can study the we can say military exercises under all these categories right so without wasting much time we will go and see the exercises that are being conducted by india uh, jointly with other countries uh, single country or group of countries first one is very very important malabar exercises they also have very we can say geopolitical significance so the participating countries are india along with india united states japan and australia so basically it is held that i mean these exercises are vehemently opposed by china china feels that the exercises exercises are being conducted against china 
so we can say we can expect a question from here because these are very very important when it comes to geopolitical aspect so the focus areas are maritime security and interoperability i mean whenever a situation comes the uh, armed forces of these four countries will be in a position to interoperable among themselves so that they can uh, put up a we can say strong defense against any uh, perceived threat right so maritime security as you all know chinese chinese actions we can understand they are increasingly viol violating the whatever the maritime laws are there and they are increasingly venturing and asserting their authority over many we can say we can say global seas on the global high seas so for that to face uh, chinese we can say aggression this particular exercises are being conducted right next is varuna it is uh, conducted between india and france focus area are focus areas are maritime exercises or maritime operations next is yudhabhyas it is conducted between india and uh, united states the focus areas are counter insurgency mountain warfare next is shakti it is between india and france focus area or thematic area is counter terrorism next is uh, indra it is between india and russia so it is also theme is here a theme areas are interoperability joint exercises between different armed forces similarly nomadic elephant it is between india and mongolia so the thematic areas are counter terrorism and peace keeping next is hand in hand it is between india and china uh, thematic areas counter terrorism mutual understanding next is sampriti so it is between india and bangladesh counter terrorism focus areas are counter terrorism and counter insurgency also so you can understand here the ex i mean the exercises are also a country specific when it comes to india and bangladesh so these are the two major problems especially the counter insurgency so is the major problem we can see many we can say insurgent elements that are hailing from the uh, northeastern india they take shelter often in bangladesh so uh, keeping uh, that in mind so there are counter insurgency we can say exercises between Bang india india and bangladesh next next is surya kiran uh, it is between india and nepal uh, the thematic areas are military cooperation interoperability next is garuda it is also between india and france uh, operational to uh, the thematic areas are increasing operational capabilities and also aerial warfare right here shakti is also there it is specific to counter terrorism but here garuda exercises they are to increase the operational capabilities and aerial warfare right next is core part so it is between india and indonesia uh, it is thematic area is maritime patrols next is simbex so the uh, countries involved are singapore and india uh thematic areas naval cooperation and anti submarine warfare next is asindex so india and australia here the exercises name of the exercises also resembles the names of the countries australia and india right exercises x means exercises right so the thematic areas naval exercises maritime security uh next is dharma guardian it is between india and japan so they are uh, i mean thematic area is joint counter terrorism next is al naga it is between india and oman so counter insurgency and joint exercises these are thematic areas next is ajaya warrior india and the united kingdom so it is also little bit important and uh, involved countries are india and uh, along with india united kingdom uh, thematic areas infantry training and joint other joint exercises next is desert eagle so it is between india and united uh, arab emirates uae thematic areas counter terrorism and special forces training next is lam lamitye so it is between india seychelles and mauritius so we can say it is a multilateral exercise because more than two countries are involved here so the thematic areas are maritime security and also disaster relief so as as you can see so whenever the smaller countries like seychelles mauritius 
so many other countries like mauritius uh, maldives these countries are uh, affected so india will be the we can say first uh, india will be the first responder india will be in the front uh, row to respond to the disasters struck by these countries so because of these reasons also india is conducting the exercises ma- uh, maris- marita- sorry the dif- uh, exercises involved with disaster management also apart from that security also becomes very very important maritime security so because of that reason the maritime security also one of the matic areas right next some other exercises are uh slinex so it is sri lanka india exercises it is between india and sri lanka uh naval cooperation and anti piracy drills these are the thematic areas next is mitri shakti it is also between india and sri lanka so you can see uh in uh, many exercises are involving india and sri lanka so slinex is one mitra shakti is also between india and sri lanka the thematic areas are counter terrorism humanitarian missions next one is equarian so counter terrorism is there because uh, the i mean the sri lankan tamil issue is a major uh, major we can say bilateral issue between india and sri lanka right so sri lanka treats them as terrorists the sri lankan tamils so ltt was there etc many things were there so in that background backdrop the mitra shakti has been we can say initiated right next is equarian so it is between india and maldives uh, military training counter insurgency so as you all know Mal- maldives is a smaller country and uh, i mean it has a small uh, small military size so basically india was training their armed forces however uh, the bilateral relations uh, nowadays have uh, we can say deteriorate, uh, deteriorated and there are a lot of problems between india and maldives when it comes to bilateral relations so try to focus uh, have some information about this area also however the military exercises are named as equarian the thematic areas are military training and counter insurgency next is sahyog kijin it is between india and japan so the thematic areas are search and rescue and maritime cooperation next is maitri it is between india and thailand so it is infantry training infantry means foot soldier foot soldiers right similarly other joint exercises right so these are the uh uh exercises all the exercises which i thought are important from the point of uf examination so try to i mean all of it is a uh, we can say factual information factual knowledge so try to remember these aspects at least try to remember uh, 10 to 15 military exercises uh, where you can link with the name and the thematic area you can where you can you, where you will be in a position to identify the countries involved right now we will see the security groupings right so there are basically four security groupings one thing you have to understand is the azar nor we can say uh, all all the countries are not involved here so we can say these are we can say informal arrangements informal arrangements they are not negotiated on a multilateral body like uh, united unbo or uh, etc so they are informal organization they have some countries voluntarily come to an understanding and they have formed informal groupings right so now we will understand about them especially to uh, we can say uh, make sure that the knowledge uh, whatever the important knowledge is there about uh, we can say security related information it will not be transformed to the we can say some countries uh, those do not have the technology that particular technology and they will i mean this transfer of knowledge will be prevented so that those countries will not acquire the uh, security related or we can say uh, missile related technologies for that uh, we can say for that uh, with that objective this groupings groupings have been formed first grouping is australia group so it is an informal arrangement it is established in 1985 with the aim of preventing the pro- proliferation of chemical and biological weapons so chemical and biological weapons you will be knowing biological weapons are the pan i mean the viruses which have the capability of spreading a particular disease on a wide scale so best example is you can say covid 
so if a particular country or a particular we can say uh, terrorist group feels that i mean tries to create a virus like covid-19 and it tries to spread that in a particular country that becomes the biological weapon so basically it is using a disease a virus or a disease causing virus or bacteria uh, to spread to use it as a weapon on a enemy country that that is called as biological weapons so chemical uh, chemical weapons you will be knowing so many uh, explosive bombs are there apart from that there will be poisonous gases uh, so so these kinds of things are known as chemical weapons so basically australia group has been created to uh, prevent uh, the transfer of or proliferation of chemical and uh, biological weapons the the knowledge related to chemical and uh, biological weapons so this group uh, group seeks to control export of materials equipment and uh, technologies that could be contribute to development of chemical or biological weapons right india is a member of the, uh, this grouping so it gained membership in 2018 right so india has to invest a lot of we can say political capital to enter into the these groupings we will understand why india has not made efforts or not that enthusiastic to join these groups earlier and now after the we can say after the nda has government uh, come to power they have made efforts to secure membership in these groups right next is vasanar arrangement so it is an arrangement it is also an informal arrangement on export controls for conventional arms and dual use goods and technologies right so it is a multilateral export control regime established in 1996 so what are dual use goods and technologies dual uses so one use is civilian use civilian use is for the benefit of the people next is military use military use right so this is whenever there are applications like civil civilian purposes or for the benefit of civilians and also military use is also there it is called uh, it is known as a dual use technology for example uh, i mean before uh, one two days we were discussing about the satellites and the satellite launch vehicles so basically the launch vehicles what are there i mean they are if they are being used to launch the satellites it can be called as civilian use however the same launch vehicle if it is uh, we can say modified a little bit uh, it can be used to launch the uh, we can say nuclear uh, bombs also nuclear weapons also so that technology then in that case that technology is called as dual use technology right right so what some countries will do some countries will purchase or get this knowledge technology of launch vehicle technology uh, example i am taking uh, uh, for example they are purchasing a launch vehicle technology from a ca- particular country uh, saying that we, we we will use this technology for launching the satellites however after acquiring that they will use that technology to launch or to gain the capability of launching the nuclear weapons so in that case it becomes the dual use uh, technology similarly some goods also will be, uh, will be there but uh, for example the we can say nuclear fissile material so nuclear materi- material whatever is there a particular country say can say that uh, i will use this nu- nuclear material for we can say making the or building the nuclear reactors to generate the energy electricity however that particular country may use that nuclear material to uh, we can say build nuclear bombs atom bombs right so in this case uh this grouping has formed so that the particular technology which has the capability of i mean which has the uh, facility of using uh using that uh, technology for military purpose also so this grouping has been formed so the uh, to ensure that that particular technology or goods are not fall i mean not go to the other countries uh, which do not have that technology now so whatever the countries that have this technology they have formed a grouping wasanar agreement through this particular agreement and they ensured among themselves that this technology will not be transferred or sold to other countries that uh, those countries which do not possess this technology right right so the aim of this uh, we can say grouping is to promote transparency and responsibility in the transfer of conventional arms and the dual use goods and technologies with a focus on preventing destabilizing 
accumulation of such items right india also india became a member in 2017 right so so this uh, signifies india's commitment to prevent transfer of these technologies also right next uh, third grouping is mtcr missile technology control regime right so mtcr is a voluntary association of countries established in 1987 with the goal of preventing prolifera- proliferation of ballistic missile so yesterday we have understood what is a ballistic missile it has the capability of launching nuclear weapons uh, to the enemy country so this treaty has been agreed to prevent the proliferation of ballistic missiles and also unmanned aerial vehicles uavs capable of delivering weapons of mass destruction so weapons of mass destruction we have understood chemical weapons are there so chemical weapons we have understood similarly biological weapons biological weapons also we have understood third uh, weapons will be there the, those are nuclear weapons or atomic weapons like atom bomb atom bomb and hydrogen bomb so all these are called the weapons of all these three are called weapons of mass destruction right so this treaty mtcr it uh, pre- i mean tries to prevent the proliferation of ballistic missiles and also the unmanned air- aerial vehicles which have capability of delivering weapons of mass destruction right so basically it is about the um uh, we can say ballistic missiles ballistic missiles and their we can say delivery systems and their delivery systems right so here also india gained its membership in 2016 you can say in india uh, in mtcr india gained its membership in 2016 next in vasanar arrangement it gained membership in 2017 and in australia group it gained its membership in 2018 so uh, every year each year after 2018 uh, 2016 gained to uh, enter into one of the four security groups however india is not part of the nuclear supplier suppliers group till now we will understand why india is not a part of it till now right next important one is nuclear suppliers group so it is a group of nuclear material supplier countries right who have the nuclear we can say nuclear material like uh, uranium uranium thorium etc so they have the nuclear material and uh, this particular grouping energy has been established in 1975 in response to concerns about nuclear proliferation so uh, uh, during the cold war you can understand there was arms race arms race so in part of this arms race so nuclear nuclear weapons have been built and uh, not only building the nuclear uh, nuclear uh, we can say warheads they were stockpiling the warheads stockpiling the war uh, piling this uh, warhead especially ussr and uh, united states of america apart from that other countries like I- iran uh, we can say north korea israel so these countries Uh, even though they are not part of the we can say uh, p5 countries p5 countries you might know so p5 countries uh, which countries they have officially recognized as uh, countries that have the we can say the nuclear weapons the countries are china rush uh, sorry china russia these two countries uh, i mean we can say one side and usa rush uh, sorry USA, France, and United Kingdom, UK. So these countries are rec- officially recognized as the officially recognized as the P5 countries. These have officially declared as have, for having nuclear weapons. You can understand the logic that these five countries are also the permanent members of permanent con- uh, members of UNSC, United Nations Security Council. So you can understand the logic. so we can say these five countries including they have uh, created a kind of nuclear apartheid on the rest of the countries however some other countries like uh, iran north korea israel and for that matter india also however they were successful in we can say accessing or building the nuclear weapons weapons unofficially 
right even for that matter pakistan also right so these countries however they have the capability or uh, we can say uh, some of the countries like uh, pakistan india north korea they have declared that they are nu- uh, they have nuclear weapons and uh, we can say iran and israel also they have acquired the sufficient or the required knowledge for building and launching a nuclear weapon right so to prevent uh, these kind of situation and uh, to uh, prevent the supply of nuclear material to these other countries which do not have the nuclear weapons or uh, not officially recognized to have nuclear weapons this particular grouping has been created we can say right so it aims to ensure that nuclear expo- exports are used for only peaceful purposes and do not contribute to nuclear weapon programs right so nst establishes guidelines for nuclear exports and seeks to harmonize national export control policies so india is not a member of the nuclear suppliers group why because china is a member of the nuclear suppliers group china is a member member of the nuclear suppliers group and it i mean what uh, if a country has to gain membership into these groupings it should be voluntary i mean all the should uh, countries other countries should accept it it should be a we can say uh we can say all the countries in that grouping should uh we can say accept that membership however china is vehemently opposed to giving membership to india china wants that india should not get nuclear material uh i mean i mean we can say we are we can say uh, rivals when it comes to geopolitical thing so china wants that india should not get membership into uh, this particular grouping uh, china wants that india should sign npt nuclear non proliferation treaty similarly another treaty is also there ctbt uh, comprehensive test ban treaty so india has not taken membership in these groupings uh, because india feels that it is i mean these regimes are npt and ctbt npt and the ctbt because india feels that these are non democratic uh, we can say treaties i mean it these are two we can say groupings or we can say agreements treaties uh, they are recognizing some countries as nuclear powered countries these five countries p5 countries russia china usa france united kingdom and these treaties say that rest of the countries uh, have no right to acquire the nuclear uh, technology or for that matter nuclear weapons so india feels that these treaties have impo- i mean imposed a nuclear apartheid and these are undecrom- undemocratic because they are discriminating some countries over the other so saying these reasons india has not signed uh these treaties and it is maintaining its autonomy when it comes to the nuclear weapons right so because of this reasons and also because of many other ge- geopolitical reasons china is opposed nuclear uh, india's entry into nuclear uh, suppliers group right however china is member of uh, this energy but it is not the member of rest of the three security groupings because all those countries who are the members of those countries they are we can say apprehensive of chinese intentions because china is of late showing its aggression and it is uh, showing its uh, aggressive posture in many many uh, aspects when it comes to uh, uh, either we can say the south china sea and also when it comes to uh, hong kong etc right so china is of late so showing its aggression when it comes to south china uh, south china sea and the east china sea and also with the neighboring countries like uh, japan uh, we can say philippines uh, even vietnam so it is showing its aggressive posture so the countries are apprehensive of chinese intentions and they are, they want that china should not acquire uh, any more uh, further any more knowledge so because of that china is not part of the part of the rest of the three groups it is only member of the uh, nuclear suppliers group however india is part of the rest of the three groups and it is not part of the nuclear suppliers uh, energy nuclear suppliers group uh, where uh, china is a member and china opposing the india's membership however uh, uh, because of that reason india could not enter into uh, 
this grouping so because of this reason india could not enter into this grouping so what india is uh, trying to do is it is trying to conclude bilateral ties sorry bilateral agreements bilateral agreements in the next class we are going to discuss about the nuclear energy only so there we will see how india is coming to overcome this uh, disability by concluding bilateral agreements when it comes to supply of nuclear material uh, through the bilateral uh, bilateral agreements so next class we will see that right so this is uh, i thought whatever uh, i mean this is i thought the information important information from the point of uh, view of examination right this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class have a good day and also advance holy to all of you uh, enjoy the holy and uh, also from next day start uh, keep your preparation on track so happy holy once again have a good day see you next time bye